yes, uh, we are live now. Uh, please start. Okay. Let me start sharing my screen. Yes, we can see the screen. Okay, shall I start? Yes, please. Okay. Hi, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Nijas. I'm working as a uh, technical manager in ANSYS as a high frequency electromagnetic application engineer. Uh, I lead a team for uh, antennas, EMIMC, signal integrity, power integrity, along with multi-physics team who does mechanical and thermal simulations. Uh, and today in this presentation, we are talking about accelerating 5G communication and wireless connectivity using some of the simulation tools. And we will talk uh, these topics, some of the requirement and some of the way of solving these problems in the upcoming slides. With that, let's introduce, uh, give an introduce about uh, 5G technology. So you may be aware that first 1G, 2G, 3G like that. Now the world is now coming into 5G technology and 6G under the R&D phase. So after 10 years, you will see the 6G coming, going to come up into the industry. Currently, 5G is mostly focusing about not only really just voice, text, and multimedia, it's more going to cover a lot of connectivity features, especially you see the parkings, smart mobility, ADAS systems, and smart homes, which going to be connected. Each and every equipment going to be connected through internet and you will be able to track and monitor each equipment. Moreover that, in order to expand the requirement of data, what they happened is the carrier aggregations between multiple band has come. So now you see there are frequency bands allotted for 5G application. So you see less than six gigahertz. Those are the frequency band we are going to use mainly for large cells and MIMO systems. So your mobile system is going to use this particular frequency band. As the frequency goes up and up, you will see the line of sight become very, very crucial. The moment you go enter your home, your connectivity will lose. Whereas the high frequency, as you go very high, then the path loss will be very high. So where we can use millimeter wave, those are for small cell applications where you need a very high data rate, very low, low latency. Means within a fraction of milliseconds, you need to get the data. So such applications, you need to have a millimeter wave application. The maximum range will be in the order of 200 to max 500 meter, whereas this can have even further distance. And in order to achieve this one, whatever the equipment we have currently, which supports 4G, now we are upgrading into 5G. The more and more antenna system going to integrate into this. And that going to create a lot of voice systems problem, increasing the density of our modules in the system. And this became very complex for user recommend. Those are our mobiles and uh, handheld devices and the base stations, communication antennas. Those become very complex here. And when it comes to uh, the requirement, the requirement actually starting from the uh, chip design. So you might have seen the, the Qualcomm and uh, other uh, SOC developers. They're releasing some ICs with the uh, 5G technologies, right? They require to support their existing 4G technology plus 5G technology. And then it has to be integrated with both digital and analog IC. Some part will be digital and some part will be analog. These ICs has to be integrated on a chip package, uh, the, we mainly say 
3D IC packages, which will be in the millimeter range, whereas the RF block will be in the order of nanometer to micrometer level. And these ICs, which are like uh, hardly 10M by 10M, these IC has to be placed on a PCB board, which may be having a 24 layer PCB. There are so many wires and routing. And this finally goes into a module. It can be your laptop, it can be your mobile, it can be a uh, hardware, which is there for networking. Then finally, we need to communicate through the city or extremely low, uh, extremely big scenarios between two mobile tower, between mobile tower to your uh, devices, how the communication goes. So the requirement actually starting from nanometer to all the way to kilometer range. And first, let's say, what is the design challenges we are going to see in the user equipment? For uh, as a user equipment, we are going to select a mobile phone here. And you can see uh, the mobile phone with uh, uh, sub six gigahertz millimeter wave antennas are required. And now 5G uh, device is going to have a 28 gigahertz millimeter, 28 to 30, 40 gigahertz millimeter wave antenna also. And there are optimization, statistical, statistical analysis, integration of antennas into this. These are some of the challenges. Then once you have this uh, statistical analysis, you need to check the coverage of that particular uh, antenna, which all area this mobile phone or mobile antenna going to have a cover, a proper coverage. Then what is the effect of your uh, human body on the antenna performance? So like that, multiple challenges and requirements are there for designing a user equipment. We'll, we are going to check all these requirement in the next few slides. Coming into an antenna, if you take a mobile, uh, you can see this mobile will have multiple antennas around it. In this multiple antenna, most of them are uh, sub six gigahertz cellular bands, antennas, Wi-Fi, GPS, etc. And now you can see there are few more antennas are also added. Those are 28 gigahertz millimeter wave antenna in this particular example, which are uh, which are placed at both sides of the mobile. We'll, we'll see why they are placing at two different sides of the uh, mobile. And this is the one image of that antenna from Qualcomm. And over here, uh, you can see we have multiple antennas on a mobile and you can also see the coverage of uh, or the operating frequency of these antennas. These and um, some of the antennas are multi-band operating frequencies. Some of the antennas uh, are single band, and you can see this. This is indicating 2.3 dB at uh, 3 dB gain at 2.96 gigahertz. This is using for wireless GSM applications, GPS application, and other LTE applications over here. And on the right rightmost side, you can see the installed antenna pattern. Uh, after integrating with an uh, mobile device over here. So this antenna pattern, uh, since we are using all 4G or lesser technology, you always make sure that it will have uh, something like a dipole kind of a pattern so that it, wherever your mobiles are orienting, it will try to communicate with, with the base stations over here. Whereas when it comes to uh, 5G antennas, 5G antennas has a, some requirement. I'll cover this uh, cumulative derivative functions and other, th other thing in the next few slides. Uh, I think I missed one slide here. Okay. So this particular antenna has a linear array over here. So these arrays will have, uh, will create a beam forming based on different magnitude and like, phase excitations. And over here, what you're seeing is something like a cumulative distribution function. This is what the people will see with a particular antenna array, which is installed on your devices. If you cover, let's take a hemisphere, one side of the sphere, full radiation pattern. At the 50 percentage of that area, what is the minimum ARP you are going to see? So this with this particular antenna, you are going to get a 21 dBm ARP. Uh, uh, with in that around 50 percentage of area. And if you go more coverage, you can go and expect almost like 27, 28 uh, 
28 dbm erp so there are toolkit developed for such an applications and this is what happening you when you have a uh, four element array you will steer this pattern at a different different direction depends on the beam id beam id is nothing but if you want to steer to some particular direction you need to give some magnitude and phase with respect to different table they, they, those are representing different different beam steering you can create an aggregate radiation pattern so this is a gain pattern uh, with respect to elevation angle the beam id one has a gain up to around uh, 12 11 10 10.5 then it is going up with it 5 dbs and when you see the upper hemisphere so if you have an array normally the array will radiate only to the one of the hemisphere either top or bottom and when you plot this 3d pattern in 2d section you can see along the theta and phi which all area going to have a the gain maxima this this particular area going to have a uh, 12 db gain and this area is going to have a lesser db of minus 5 db gain that upper hemisphere so these all plots you can make it using some toolkit inside the installer of hfss and with that you can plot the contour area and which beam id is covering that particular uh, area those plots also you can overlay on top of it uh, one example is uh, okay I'll, I'll come to that particular slide uh, this is the one uh, example. Uh, as I mentioned, that particular mobile antenna has a two arrays. One is one phase array over here, one another phase array over here. So you know, if you have a one phase array module antenna array module, it can cover only the upper hemisphere of this particular radiation pattern. If your mobile station is on the other side, you need to have place another uh, phase array over here. So that's the reason the first antenna will cover the upper hemisphere. The second bottom and phase array will cover the bottom, the other phase array. So this cumulative derivative function indicating if you have only one antenna at a 50 percentage of entire 360 degree, you can expect maximum of 70, 17.25 EARP. If you use two antennas, that 50 percentage of area maximum you can get up to 20.54. So you improve your EARP by adding one more like millimeter module over here. And this talks about how the uh, antenna coverage is going to be for the entire 360 in a 2D uh, pro rectangular plot. Another one very important thing is, as you know, your human bodies are, their properties are not constant over the frequency. As you go higher and high frequencies, especially more than 60 gigahertz, your human body become more or like a conductor. It will, it, the conductivity is very high. So if you keep your antennas or your finger on top of your antennas, you're going to disturb your antenna pattern a lot. So we can, we normally keep our 5G, especially millimeter wave antennas at the location where the fingers are not going to position in normal operating uh, cases. So uh, you can see the pattern going to change. Not only the pattern, you can also see the effect in the uh, S parameter while placing the antenna or finger on top of the antenna. So you can see the, the matching is from minus 20 reduces all the way to minus 12 dB over here by placing the finger on just in front of the antenna module. And uh, over here, some of the regulatory things. So we talked about antenna cumulative derivative functions. And uh, now we are going to talk about a regulatory, uh, sorry, this slide, small delay. Yeah, regulatory standard for 4G and 5G applications. And you know, at the 4G maximum, you will go up to three, 3.5 gigahertz of uh, frequencies, but 5G, it extended all the way to uh, six gigahertz, then there are a lot of millimeter wave antennas also there. So any any uh, device which is working less than six gigahertz is mandatory to use specific absorption rate uh, analysis. Your human, human body going to absorb the electromagnetic wave. But as I mentioned, your human body become very conductive at the millimeter wave frequency. 
uh, more than six gigahertz, around 10 gigahertz and all, the penetration of electromagnetic wave is very small towards the human body. So the surface of the human body will have all the power. There won't be any power inside. So the regulator is saying, don't need to do specific absorption rate. If this uh, operating frequency is more than six gigahertz, you need to do the power density simulations. Power density simulations, nothing but you need to make sure the power which is radiating from the antenna at some certain distance should not go beyond some uh, watts per meter, okay? So what is the current standard for power density? So the FCC came up with IEC 627045 standard. In this standard, what, what is the requirement is, uh, you need to do power density simulation in 3D EM simulation tool and find the worst case operating conditions. And uh, you know, there will be multiple antennas around this mobile. You have to, each antenna will do different, different beam IDs. So you need to do the power density for different, different beam uh, positions and find out out of the thousands of cases, find out a uh, 10 to 20 worst case, do the measurement only for that 10 to 20 cases and submit that report to FCC. That is a uh, requirement currently for 5G mobiles to get a FCC standard. And what is happening if you are going to do the complete measurement for such, this is kind of system. If you do all kinds of combination for different frequency, different antenna, different B configuration, you need to do 1000 plus, 1500 plus combinations will be there. And the problem is, and each measurement will take three hours for one operating condition. And uh, if you want to take 1,600 combination into three, it's going to take 200 days for just for a measurement. That's not possible. That's the reason you do thousands of simulations, generate a report, only do the measurement for 10, 10 to 20 worst case cases. So this is what the toolkit developed for it. Uh, what you can see is uh, there is an option for a beam ID calculator and different, different beam ID. You can see how the power is power density is pa power is passing through this particular surface, and you take the pointing vector of that, you will get uh, what is the maximum power is coming and what is the average value around this area. Uh, for a simple example, I'll show another slide which, which clearly tell you how it is working. So let me play this video. So you can see this there is a phase array which is steering and you're checking the power at two different distances away from the mobile devices, two centimeter, four centimeter, and you're checking the power density over here at two centimeter, how much is the power, four centimeter, how much is the power. They're also plotting the same in a 2D plane, a 2D as a line, how much is the power is coming. And there are requirement, it should not go more than 10 watts per meter. That's a standard for different. And that standard will change with the different uh, distance of this plane. So this is how the power density uh, analysis will do it in simulation. The advantage is once you simulate these uh, models in tool, all these beam, st beam steerings are post-processing. So you run the simulation, then the tool will automatically do this all beam, form, uh, beam forming and it will give you the power density and uh, cumulative distribution function analysis. These are some of the requirement challenges for the user equipment. Now we will see uh, another very important topic here, uh, the RF interference. You might have noticed we have a GPS, we have 5G technology, 4G technology, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all are placed in a very small space around that mobile devices, right? So there can be chance of interference between this component. So in this example, what we are going to show is, is an example which uh, it's going to talk about interference between your antenna to the digital device. So there is a beam steering antenna over here, uh, which you might have seen in the previous slide. And there are some digital uh, signal. This is a microcontroller IC, which is going to communicate with uh, this particular uh, memory. So this digital signal is passing through here. So one and zero digital signal here, but there is a RF signal. So RF signal, we have uh, almost uh, 
36 antenna elements here and there are some digital signals so all the ports are connected through circuit and hfss and in the next slide i will show you when the antennas are all off and your controller is sending the signal to ddr memory through this uh, dq7 digital uh, the uh, you can say differential pair uh, no this is a single ended pair and you can see the i diagram so i diagram indicating the quality of the digital signal from the microcontroller to your memory module if your eyes are open your receiver will be able to distinguish between zeros and one if the eyes became close you this is this level you can say these levels are zero these levels are one if the eyes become close then the receiver won't be able to identify which one is zero which one is one okay so this is when the antennas are all turned off you are able to communicate properly then now the next case what is happening over here is you are having a phased array beam and you are going to steer it and at particular steering angle you can see the eyes became closed because you are not able to distinguish between ones and zero at the receiver side and that is happening only at some particular beam steering point so that indicating some of the uh, beam steering conditions there is a huge chance that you are going to lose your digital communication on the other side of the vc okay so this is one case of an rf interference in the data communication and this is so far we talked about mobile and how the interference is coming up now we will going to talk about uh, base stations antennas so this is a simple example of a 64 element beam forming system that can, will consist of a digital block then there will be if block there will be rf block and there are phased array antennas over here normally fpgas will be used for a digital system so uh, the 5g technology came up with the techniques called a digital beam forming uh, it is nothing but in analog beam forming your beam steering happening at the RF block using a phase shifter. So phase shifters are very expensive and uh, you don't have an option to create multiple beams and other thing in analog beam forming. Whereas the phase shifter from RF block will be replaced with the delays blocks in digital section so that the delay for each antenna can be controlled uh, in the digital section. Then it goes to the IF side, amplify the signal and transmit it. Similarly, the transmission will go and when it is receiving the switch will or connect to the receiver block, the antenna will be receiving the signal and back send it back to FPG. This is an example of a complete transmitter receiver system of a 64 element DBF system. Okay, so keep this in mind and what we are going to focus today is on the antenna side because this side is uh, requires a lot of different analysis like a uh, uh power amplifier record uh, uh, iip3 yip3 and uh, linearity test harmonic balance analysis and so on uh, that's that is a top different topic so we are going to focus mainly on the antenna side of this communications the digital beam forming communication system for that in order to start this antenna design, first you need to create a, an antenna module which can support your operating frequency. So you, you design that antenna and create that antenna array. And this array is normally will be protected using uh, our uh, radomana, radomes, which are protecting the end from the external environment. But the microwave or millimeter frequency point of view, this radom should not impact the performance of the antenna. So it should be uh, less low C in that microwave region. And you need to see what is the effect of radiation pattern changes uh, because of the radom integration. And then you need to also check the coupling between the antennas. If you are, since we are using MIMO system, you need to have good isolation between the transmitter to sorry it, between each and, and an element so uh, the isolation between the elements are also very critical in this so in order to do that analysis uh, ANSYS came up with a technology called unit cell analysis then you can go with the explicit antenna model or 3d component array model in the unit cell analysis what you will do is you will just model only single element and then 
using array factor method it's nothing but pattern multiplication method you have an uh, you can set your antenna element positions and you can just multiply with this antenna element pattern then you will get a array pattern so that is a easy way of creating the uh, fire the array uh, but the problem is a lot of fx like edge fx and uh, uh, the mutual coupling effect you can include it but the edge effect will be neglected and uh, the easy thing is it is low computational point of view is very simple another one is you can model the entire antenna as it is and then simulate it uh, it can take care of mutual coupling arbitrary excitations edge coupling edge treatments and uh, different complex geometries you can do it what answers came up recently is it's called 3d component array which can do the same explicit array simulation in very different way that means uh, compared to simulation time and uh, the computation requirement of memories and everything this does pretty nice job here you can get a 2 to 3x kind of speed up in the computation it takes care of all edge effect mutual coupling arbitrary excitation everything including the curved radomes and everything in the array okay so this technology uh we will explain in the next slide but before that just see what we normally do for uh unit cell analysis for this and you can see an antenna then there is a radom portion over here we can do a lot of optimization and make sure in a simple antenna whether they are they meeting the operating conditions at a different different scan directions so you can get the active s parameter from the unit cell analysis at a different different scan and make sure if this is your operating frequency all scan angles are we getting the proper impedance matching and that you can do without modeling the entire array and you can also see the radiation the beam forming pattern uh, which is not considering the edge effect but you can get the main beam pretty accurately using this technology also the radom uh, thickness and its separation also can be optimized using the same technique uh, you can make sure the insertion loss for uh, the radom at that particular frequency should be less at the different different scan angles those can be optimized this here regarding that the 3d component array what you will do is you divide the entire array into different different segments and uh, you arrange it and it will parallelly mesh all these 3d component together and fuse all the mesh and then solve the problem and it it independently adapt it and mesh and solve it so because of this technique you can solve this kind of problem much more easy way this is an example of two d6 element phased array system which consists of four 8 by 8 array and which also has a curved radome and uh, different different polarized antennas are over here uh, it can model edge effect multi element spacings dummy element and uh, you can also see the effect of failure in this system so normally 5g base station system also has some calibration lines also in order to detect whether the elements are failed or not uh, by without even doing that in simulation we can see what is a effect if two or three antennas in my systems are not working how it is going to impact on my antenna performance that also you can check out of this particular simulations and what all thing post processing it gives it, you can excite any ports so the entire antenna is here out of that i wanted to excite only few antennas so you do one simulation then you can set which all antennas need to be excited be able to see the the animations of the field and how much it is coupling to other antennas similarly you can also do the beam forming so this beam forming is also post processing once you simulate it you can steer your pattern this is plotted in 2d uh you can steer the pattern into any direction by just giving the theta and phi directions moreover that you can also get full port coupling matrix so you can see the worst case s parameter is minus 10 db and better isolation you are getting at a minus 77 db isolations and these are all are the self resonant self coupling and this all defect these all sections are mutual coupling segments 
and coming into yeah very important thing especially when you go to millimeter frequencies uh one slide back okay. millimeter frequencies you will have a your device is going to operate at a very high frequencies right because of the very high frequency uh your thermal losses will be very high uh your device or your material property will have lossy material property because of that your structure device become very hot you can simulate these structures in uh, hfss compute the rf losses and then do the thermal simulation and predict how the temperature is going to build up on this particular thing so you can you this is the thermal simulation is also very necessary for 5g base station and high power applications and coming into uh, physical channel extraction before that let's summarize what all we discussed we discussed about how to dis design the user equipment such as mobiles and everything how to design base station antennas now we are going to see how how the channel is going to extract before that you need to be uh, let's understand what is mean by channel so if you want to communicate data between transmitter to receiver right let's say between transmitter is our mobile and the receiver is our base stations your base station uh, the base band your mobile has to send some data which will comes as a 10 10 bits which will come to dsp system and the dsp system will convert to analog it will mix to high frequency through filter power amplifier it will comes to your antenna and this mobile normally sits one of the building or the road side of this particular city your base station antenna may be on a tower or maybe hitting on your one of the building so this the communication between the mobile to the uh, the base, base station antenna that particular communication we called channel so why channel is extraction is important i'll i'll come to that one so this is nothing but the the link between the transmitter to receiver as we know if you have just a just a simple transmitter and receiver and then we can easily do the beam forming and if i know the gain of the transmitter gain of the receiver i can calculate what is the loss going to be but let's consider another scenario if there is a metal blocking so the moment you if you have a line of sight you are losing the line of sight then your coupling antenna to antenna coupling or path loss is different because the informing system can adapt another path in order to get a cover uh, good connection between the transmitter and receiver here the moment the metal is blocking the communication it's detecting another path and which is non line of sight path and try to communicate with this receiver so this is a technology which integrated inside the 5g technology even though there are many cases you may not have a line of sight between your base station to your mobile devices through the multi path also there is a possibility of connecting it and in order to get that one especially when you have a big city and you have a mobile base station and uh, user equipment you can't solve this entire problem by meshing and then solve the electric field of that instead of that the technology for this is shooting and bouncing ray from the base station transmitter it actually shoot lot of rays depends on the material property there will be a lot of hit point from the first hit point it will retransmit it to another direction then it will go to hit another point it will retransmit to another one and finally you will have a lot of hitting points which nothing but the surface current generated over the entire area and these currents actually going to contribute to the receiving antennas so this is a technology we use for computing the channel or the, uh, the antenna to antenna coupling using the uh, shooting and bouncing ray technology this is mainly using for electrically large simulations so what is happening in uh, 5g technology is say let's say there is a base station antenna placed at a mobile tower and there is a receivers at a different location when the wave is transmitting from the base station it is not going just line of sight there you can see it depends on the uh, position uh, and the buildings and structure 
there can be bounces even from the ground the reflection will come and then it can hit on the uh, building then reflect it back to here and there so the multi path is happening something like this wherever hit some of the energy will absorb some of the energy will reflect it so in this kind of scenario we are going to see check how a transmitting antenna going to going to be aware where is my receiving antenna so that is happening through uh, beacon signals uh, so the user equipment will send the, uh, the channel state information so the, let's say mobile is sending some uh, data to base station and which is transmitting through different uh, uh, multipath environment assume one is having line of sight another one is having uh, non line of sight but since this is a memo system each antenna receiving the same data same data with a different different phase difference so by looking into the phase difference uh, the base station will get to know that okay this and this mobile device is located at a particular direction so they just reverse the phase and then retransmitted the data back to the mobile so this is called channel state information something like every uh, uh, seconds or every milliseconds this mobile devices send the beacon signal to uh, base station and base station also send the beacon signal to uh, mobile because both having a phase array and they will dictate which direction your stronger base station is located and so if you reverse this phase information your base station will be able to focus your beam towards that particular equipment but the problem is that in order to get a good communication between transmitter and receiver you need to uh make sure there is no rf interference is coming especially when the rf interference or same frequency is transmitting from another devices and which is coupling stronger than your uh, intended equipment then the communication quality will come down in order to avoid that one there are different uh, method of beam forming one is called zero force beam forming and uh, another one is called a uh, maximum ratio transmission in maximum ratio transmission it's not considering anything on the uh, interferer but zero force beam forming it consider the interference and it will automatically create a radiation null towards that interferer so that the coupling between these two will be very very small even though these antennas are very close by and it make sure there is a proper coupling how to happen between the intended devices and that increases the signal to noise ratio in the presence of interferer and you can get a good cup communications so these are some of the memo algorithms maximum ratio transfer algorithm and zero force beam forming algorithm we'll show you an example of these two technology the 5g system modeling uh, we need to have a, a link between the uh, base station to your user equipment and there can this scenario these devices in this particular city can be move in uh, dynamic fashions and we can see the coupling between the transmitter to receiver in a different different time instance and we can use that data into matlab or python to calculate the uh, channel state information and or the coupling between base station to uh, user equipment in dynamic fashion so i'll show you one example there is a base station which is on the building and there are vehicle which is moving left and right and the base station has to transmit the data to multiple uh, receivers so here you can see the base station is transmitting and over here there are five beams are generated from the uh, base station and you can see with respect to time the base stations are the radiation pattern of each antenna are dynamically changing with respect to their position and you can also see with respect to time how the antenna to antenna coupling is happening so the antenna to antenna coupling uh, over here you can see this is maintaining quite well even though the vehicles are moving uh, away from the straight path so you can see this vehicle is moving away from here but still the communication is the pretty good but notice one thing at some points most of this time there is a sudden 
jump and dip in the coupling. So the, those are due to the multipath scenario. If you have a multiple signals coming uh, towards a receiver through different path, some areas you will have a constructive effect, some area you will have a destructive effect. Because of that, you will see a lot of jump in the uh, antenna to antenna coupling because each time your vehicles are moving, so distance are varying, some point it will, it will have a constructive interference, some point it will have a destructive interference. And here you are seeing another example. This is for 60 gigahertz. As you know, millimeter, if you uh, go higher and high frequency, the 60 gigahertz uh, and uh, 30, 60, 40, there are many bands allotted for that millimeter wave. Those are for low distance, high speed data communications. So there is an example of a 16 element array work, uh, placed on a room, uh, which is working at 60 gigahertz, which is trying to communicate with a, a targeted uh, user equipment. Uh, so the beamform will always happen towards this, but there is a interferer equipment, which is moving in between, between the transmitter to receiver. So this is applying the zero force beamforming algorithm. What you will see is if I slow down this particular animation, there is a radiation null which is following this person. So wherever this person is moving with respect to the base station, you can see a radiation null which is creating. So that radiation null indicating that between this antenna to this antenna, the interferer, the coupling will reduce drastically compared to the uh, with uh, maximum power transfer technique. So that improves the signal in noise ratio, the communication system, in that improves the communication quality. So that's all uh, I would like to cover on this particular uh, session. Uh, we talked about user equipment, we talked about uh, base station design, we talked about communication which is happening between transmitter to user in a multi-path environment. Hope you like this presentation. And I'm just checking any questions. I hope there is no questions on this session. If there is any question, you can put it in a chat. We'll connect you back to offline.